Hey, Bio. It's Mr. Jones again. This time I'm coming to you with a uh, DNA. Hey, Bio. It's Mr. Oh, Jari. What? Dude, I thought we had established that this one was going to no, be my lecture. This is my turn. So you did the what? last one, so I'm doing this Well, one. yeah, but remember we saw that you weren't doing a great job, and I was kind of No, we we actually decided that you were terrible at this, so. Well, I think if you look at the likes and dislikes, what? it's pretty clear. No, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How whoa. about I take a shot at this one this time? All right. All right. Fair enough. All right. Hey, bio fans. It's Mr. Gan, and welcome to my very first video lecture. All right, so let's talk about DNA replication. Obviously, you want to know where DNA replication takes place and when does it take place. DNA replication takes place both in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Obviously, anywhere that has DNA and where DNA needs to be replicated. In eukaryotes, DNA takes place in the nucleus and also in cytoplasm in prokaryotes. Um, if you look down at this diagram, something you may remember from first semester, the diagram of the cell life cycle. Here we have our M phase, followed by the G1 or the growth phase, followed by the S phase and the G2 phase. DNA replication is going to take place right here in the S phase of interphase. Alright, so DNA replication first begins at specific sites um, along the DNA, or in case this case, specific, a specific sequence. We call those origins of replication. At that specific sequence, it starts with helicase, which is an enzyme. We know it's an enzyme because it ends in ASE, comes in and starts to unzip and unwind the two strands of DNA. It does this by breaking the weak hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. Eventually, this creates a replication form, or a Y-shaped region. Excuse me. As you can see, we have our parent DNA here, and eventually helicase would be, could be found right here at this red dot, and it creates this like sideways Y. Right. Alright, so at those origins of replication, it creates a replication bubble. You can imagine it as the two strands of DNA being separated like this. Alright, so at the replication bubble, there may be more than one site. In prokaryotes, only form a single bubble, while eukaryotes can form many bubbles. And at these replication bubbles, you could find helicase at either side of the replication bubble, and it's going to go in both directions until all bubbles meet, and copying is complete. Okay, so here is a better picture of replication sites and replication bubbles of a eukaryote. As you can see, we had multiple bubbles here, here, and here, as well as multiple replication forks that are going in both directions. And looking down to number two here, the, rep the replication bubble is going to get bigger and bigger until they all meet, and two daughter DNA molecules are formed. When we're talking about DNA replication, it's actually a, called a semi-conservative model. That is semi-conservative because each in each of the two DNA molecules made, there is one parent strand that is still found in each of them. And since each of them are still there, and they're still conserved, and it's only one out of the two, we call it a semi-conservative. Semi-conservative. All right, and as I said earlier in the previous slide, DNA replication in eukaryotes can occur at multiple sites of replication and multiple bubbles are going to be formed. In picture B over here, it shows a micrograph of replication bubbles. 
as you can see, we have a bubble right here, a bubble right here, and a bubble right here. And these arrows indicate the direction that replication is happening, and eventually when all those arrows meet, replication is going to be complete. All right, so here is an animation of what DNA, how DNA replication actually looks. So we had our origin of replication followed by helicase and something we call single-stranded binding proteins that are going to bind to the now single strands of DNA. Here, this large purple area is something called DNA polymerase, which is responsible for adding free nucleotides to the template strand that we had just separated. So here we have a different enzyme called primase, which is responsible for adding a short strand of RNA to the new template strand. This is because DNA polymerase needs some sort of starting point, and the starting point is indicated by the RNA primer. As you can see, the, the large smaller, the purple blob is going to come in and add new, new nucleotides to the template strand, and it's going to complete all the way through the strand. Eventually, something else is going to come along, which I'll talk about later, and to remove that RNA primer in, and change it into a DNA section. All right, so here are some, some texts kind of explaining what we just saw. So after the replication bubble is formed and helicase begins to separate the two strands of DNA, something we call single strand binding proteins. For shorthand, you can just write them as SSBs, bind to the new template strands, which are now single strands, will bind to it and it prevents it from annealing back into, uh, into the double helix structure. This is because after helicase um, separates the two, the base pairs have an affinity to each other and they're going to want to naturally come back together. However, it's those SSBs that stop that from happening. Following helicase and the SSBs binding to the new strands, a different enzyme called primase comes in and adds that RNA primer that I was talking about in the previous animation. Um, like I said, the RNA primer sets down a small piece, a small sequence of RNA to the template strand, which allows DNA polymerase to come in, it kind of gives it that signal to come in and to add those free nucleotides. As always, the free nucleotides are going to match up with its complementary base pair. Sorry, I got cut off there, but it's going to be in the complementary base pairs. All right, so here we have a, another diagram. Um, you can forget about the polymerase. We're not going to talk about that. But here we have helicase coming in to unwind and unzip our double helix structure. We have our SSBs coming in to bind to the now single strand of DNA in order to prevent it from annealing back to each other. We have our other enzyme primase coming in to add the short sequence of RNA, which then allows for DNA polymerase to come in and begin replication. Right, so here we have another um, animation, which is going to describe the leading strand and lagging strand. As you can see, we have DNA polymerase up top in the large purple blob. We have a primase. These small oval brown ones are our single stranded binding proteins. Excuse me. The thing about DNA replication is that there are two strands that are actually going in opposite direction of each other. As you can see, one strand up top is synthesized in a continuous manner, right? It's going to just go complete all the way to its finish. The lagging strand, which is down here, actually is synthesized in a discontinuous manner, meaning that an R primase is going to come in and add a new primer, 
for then DNA polymerase to come in to complete it. Eventually, we have other enzymes called ligase, which then comes in and matches those fragments together. All right, so leading versus lagging. As I said, because of the anti-parallel structure, a leading strand and a lagging strand is created. This is because DNA polymerase can only build onto the three end of a growing end, a growing DNA strand. Because of this and the anti-parallel structure, that opposite facing structure that DNA has, one strand is replicated in a continuous manner without any breaks, without any stops, and the lagging strand is synthesized in a discontinuous where there's multiple fragments, and multiple RNA primers that have to be laid down in order for DNA polymerase to complete. Eventually, what's once um, in order to completely synthesize the lagging strand, or in this case, the lagging strand is made up of different fragments called Okazaki fragments. Another enzyme called ligase comes in and kind of glues those Okazaki fragments together. In the next slide, I will show you um, a better picture, which will help you understand what I mean by Okazaki fragments in a leading strand and a lagging strand. So here we go. So this top strand is our leading strand, and this bottom strand is our lagging strand. As, you, as said in the last slide, DNA polymerase right here can only add free nucleotides to the three prime end of a growing DNA strand. Obviously, this would mean that DNA replication on this leading strand is going to go in this direction, as indicated by that top arrow. When looking at the lagging strand, DNA Synthesis and replication is actually going in the opposite direction. This is due to the, the anti-parallel nature of DNA. As you can see, primase comes in and adds a short RNA primer. And this, this is where DNA polymerase is going to come in and add free nucleotides to the three prime end. And each of these little segments right here, this segment here, this segment here, and this segment all the way throughout here is called Okazaki fragments. Eventually DNA ligase is going to come in and glue those strands together, but this is only after DNA polymerase comes back and it actually takes out the little RNA primers and switches them to DNA. As I said earlier, DNA replication ends with DNA polymerase coming back and editing any mistakes, proofreading all the new synthesized strands. And like I said, one of its major functions is it goes back in and removes that short sequence of RNA laid down from primase and changes it to a complementary DNA sequence. So as always, make sure that you complete your skeleton notes. Please write down any questions you may have. Um, bring those to class. Um, feel free to watch the this video lecture again. I know it's kind of confusing, but in class we'll definitely go over it in a little more detail. I'm sorry this video was a little rushed, but I, I think um, you'll be able to figure it out on your own if you can't come back, ask questions. That's what we like. And yeah, so hope you enjoyed my first video lecture. Please like, comment, subscribe, and give me a thumbs up. Okay, see you in class.